So I understand you had quite a patient this morning. I did. Um, one of my first patients of the morning actually came in extremely, extremely distressed. Um, two things I noticed right away. One, she came in protecting her ears, so wearing ear protection, wearing earplugs from pretty normal sounds. So she was very bothered by sensitivity to sound. Second thing I noticed was on her paperwork she filled out for me. Um, one of the things that she had put down was that she was told by her physician that there was nothing that could be done regarding her hyperacusis. So she came in just extremely distressed and feeling pretty hopeless. Wow. Yeah. So right I know start. that she came in with a couple people for support. She did. She brought in family members. So she's actually living with family members because she isn't able to cope on her own. So um, right away, first thing we talked about was the fact that there is something we can do for her hyperacusis. There is, in fact, it's a, a myth that there's nothing that can be done. And so just giving her a little bit of that hope right away, I could easily just see um, that distress kind of melt away. So that was that was hopeful for me. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. So then what? So walking through the information regarding tinnitus and hyperacusis and treatment options for what we could do, um, I think once we were able to give her a little bit of a plan in place and try some devices with her to help her understand that, number one, the protection that she was trying to accomplish by using her earpieces was actually hurting the system. Um, so coming up with a plan to help her overcome that and giving her devices was really helpful, I think. And so um, she walked out of here, I think, feeling more hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, having a plan in place. Because don't you, when you treat people with hyperacusis, the mm -hmm. sensitivity to sound, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot the same way you treat people with tinnitus, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. walk me through that a little bit. Yeah. So tinnitus is actually a little bit easier to talk through and to treat in that I think people see relief right away. Um, tinnitus is the brain trying to overcome a disruption to your auditory system and it creates a sound that we know as tinnitus and so oftentimes we can play with sound and reduce that right away. Hyperacusis is a little bit different. Hyperacusis is the mechanisms within the ear and the connection from the ear to the brain that are in hyperdrive. And so it's a little bit almost like the gas pedals on your car, having a gas pedal and a brake pedal, your system has a regulation to it. With hyperacusis, it's like losing the brakes and the gas is just going. And so your system is over amplifying things that it shouldn't be. And that creates the sensation for patients that things that are very normal, a whisper or a family member talking to you is actually quite painful. Mm. Yeah. I remember Julie telling me about one patient that they couldn't, the family couldn't use um, regular plates in their mm -hmm. house and they couldn't mm -hmm. use regular silverware mm -hmm. because it drove him crazy. Yes. And I don't yes. mean crazy, but just absolutely unbearable. Right. So. Yeah. So you're able to give her some hope, and yes. um, how long till you see her again? So we'll actually see her back pretty quickly, so probably within the next week or so. Mm -hmm. um, this first appointment was really just going over information and giving her some hope and giving her a plan in place, a treatment plan in place, and then we'll go from there. So this is for this particular patient will be baby steps, but she walked away feeling like there's hope. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks for sharing. Sure.